Hey everyone, John here, and today we're going to be diving right into the deep end with regards to digitizing for finished hats. You got to remember we're no longer embroidering on a flat surface, but it is a curved surface because on a tubular machine you can put a cap attachment on and you can put a finished hat on that cap attachment and you are changing all the rules of digitizing for a flat surface to a curved surface. So this is going to be packed with lots and lots of theory. Now if you enjoy these videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit that bell for notification and we're going to get started digitizing right now. Okay, I've got my glove, I've got my pen, I've got my goggles, and I'm ready to go. Now, looking at this design, a couple things I want to point out first, because you always need a game plan, is that I'm going to do this for a cap, which means I'm just going to do the logo, I'm not going to do the lettering along the bottom, but I'll probably digitize that afterwards so that they will have an option for left chest as well as a cap. Uh, also, I need to keep in mind the size, I guess, uh, requirements that I have based on my machine. If I were using my ZSK machine and running this finished hat, I could probably go very close to three inches in height on this cap and doing the bottom lettering wouldn't be a problem. But I'm going to do this on my 10 needle, which does have, I guess, some limitations as far as the height of the actual design. It's about 2.4 inches. So I'm going to make sure I stay within that area and that way I'll pretty much be you know, good on any machine that it would go on. Now I can also see there's some variegation in this design. It's going from a dark green at the bottom to a lighter green up top. And I'm going to have to make sure that I you know, think outside the box a little bit or think outside the house in this, in this situation. But I want to make sure that my edges are really nice and clean. So I'm going to end up adding an outside border which will run the same color as the hat so that I can hide all of those traveling or edge stitches. And then we have to take into account that this software, which is Hatch that we're using, incredibly powerful for the price point because you are getting, in my opinion, full commercial capabilities. I've said over and over again, I can do any design pretty much as quickly with the same quality results with Hatch than I can in the commercial counterpart of Wilcom software, which is, um, you know, there is a ton more properties and things that you can play with. So there is more that you get for your dollar because it is thousands of dollars more, uh, but, I can pretty much make this software react and fly just as quickly at the same altitude as I can with uh, the commercial or the home. But I do need to think outside the box a little bit because some of my drawing tools which are in my commercial platform aren't there. And also uh, with regards to you know, using some of the uh, inputs or stitch types, they change a little bit as well. So I'm going to show you how I can very easily set up this design so that I know that it is going to give me the same tools or requirements that I would need in the commercial software. There's always ways to think outside the house, so to speak. So now that I have this design set up on screen, I'm just going to leave it. I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to make it about the uh, size of the screen. I am going to digitize this at a 6 to 1 scale because that is the scale that I like to digitize at, especially for commercial designs that I want to be crisp and clear. And if you've taken our education, our digitizer's dream course, I set that foundation right from the beginning that you learn to digitize at a set scale. And it's vitally important to getting clean results. But to set up some things that I want to work with, as far as guidelines, because I don't have drawing tools within this program, I'm just going to create a little box. And in that box, I'm going to make this pretty much any color. I can make it red if I want. So let's just grab that color and make it red. I'm going to choose, actually let's go out of the US and go into metric because I always like to think in metric when I'm thinking of digitizing. Select that again. I'm going to change this to three millimeters and stitch length is fine. We're going to have absolutely no underlay on there. And I'm going to hit the H key and I'm going to change the angle of this to let's say about 30 degrees, which if I hold the control key down and move it, it will give me 30 degrees. It changes in 15 degree implements, or increments, sorry. Now if I look here, this is really now just a guideline. This is allowing me to see an angle. So when I start to break up this variegation, I have some lines that I can follow and know that I am actually doing variegation evenly all the way through. Now the other thing that I want to do is I'm just going to go into a uh, digitized closed shape 
and I am going to go to my 6 to 1 scale and there I am keep in mind I am on a, a pretty uh, large screen I have a 32 inch Wacom that I'm using so I'm doing curves and straights and I'm going to outline this house and I'm going to be very accurate when I do it because I want to make sure that all of my lines are nice and clean because I want to add a border to travel underneath my variegation and I want to make sure that I digitize this border by hand and I want it to be approximately two millimeters in width but I want to make sure that it is exactly two millimeters in width not a millimeter you know off or half millimeter off in any given area so I'm going to create this object here and this is a stitch but I'm going to use it as a line so when I break it into a line I'll go to outlines it's a running stitch I'm going to change this to like literally 0.5 millimeters normally I would never do a stitch that is 0.5 millimeters but if you look at that right now I have a line there that is pretty exact because the stitch length is shorter and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab that line and I'm going to go into my create layouts and I'm going to tell it to do an offset and there's my offset set at two millimeters I can do another offset in the exact same color and in I, when I click this it's going to give me that offset and I can now grab that line and let's change that to 0.5 millimeters as well so now if I look on screen here and I'm just going to call this up to full screen and if I turn off the true view and if I get rid of the image behind there I now have all of my lines set up to digitize this this is really kind of the beginning point where I've allowed for stitch angles I've allowed for that traveling border around the outside and this is going to make it much easier for me to go in and digitize all of the elements of these designs and make sure they're perfect the first time without having a lot of editing afterwards okay now before we bring our artwork back in I'm gonna do one more quick little thing I'm gonna grab that uh, object and I'm just going to move it ever so slightly so that it is lining up to this line here and this line here that way I know that it's pretty much even and I know I made those uh, little lines three millimeters apart because if I want to do variegation I probably want to make sure that the bottom solid color and the top solid color are even on either side and then I have variegation in between and that'll give me the best flow so that it looks even so what I'm going to do is I'm going to unhighlight that I'm going to choose my digitize open line and I'm going to count from here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 and there is number 10 right here and I'm just going to draw a line right from here over to here at that 30 degree angle and I can tell that I am pretty much right on and hit that right there then I'm going to count from this side here I'm going to do the same thing one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and there is number ten over to that side so if I take this angle from here and I go all the way across to here now I know that I have exactly ten units and again I can very quickly just verify that it is ten units from there and it is 10 units and by units I mean I guess 3 millimeter units so it's about 30 millimeters from edge to edge and then I can get rid of that line right there and I can just keep these as my focal point so there is my focal point for that and again you know just make sure everything is good now I can bring my artwork back in and start digitizing knowing that that's the base of my my you know drawing tools that I would need their stitches we're gonna delete them later on but this will make it so much easier in the digitizing process okay one more quick thing to do before we digitize the green fill is I'm gonna duplicate that line and I'm gonna put in some lines to adjust for my push and pull compensation because with uh, embroidery you have the pull which is the direction of the thread and you also have the push which happens on the open end so if my fill is going at 30 degrees I'm gonna have push at the open ends and I'm going to have pull uh, the direction of the stitch so now that those are in place now I can digitize my fill and make sure I'm on a fill stitch I need to go to my scale which is six to one and I'm gonna digitize right here starting on the line that is dictating my push and then this one is going outwards to allow for my pull here's push here's pull 
and I'm going to continue looking at this. Now keeping in mind that I want to make sure that I just come to this point here. I'm not going to digitize all the way around because I want to have gradation in this design. So I am allowing for the gradient fill that I want to make sure that I put in there manually. So I'm going to hit that enter and there we go. And if I go down to the bottom here and let's hit that H key, I can make sure that I grab that angle and I want it to be the exact same angle as before, which is 30 degrees. So that adjusted for my push and pull compensation. Now I can see that I want to also go in here and I'm going to do this top piece. But before I do that, I'm going to make sure I do the bottom piece. So here is where I was at 10. And I'm going to come in here and go to my light color and we're going to digitize this as another closed shape but I'm going to go right to this point here and let's just go right to here and then right to here pretty much following the exact same lines that I just did I went off screen there for a second but I'll get it back and just come right here 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 and let's go back to where we began and I don't want to go that far I want to go actually up a little bit right to this line right here so let's do that one and let's then hit the enter and let's grab this piece right here so that I can hit the H key I'm going to change the stitch direction the angle to 30 degrees as well so I'm going to grab that change it to 30 so it's the same direction and then I'm going to go into my effects and I'm going to tell it to do a um, a blending effect but I'm gonna go let's say to 2.5 millimeters so let's try 2.5 first and see how that looks and then let's go to a point uh, four five or I could even do point five so let's try that hit that one and then let's turn off that to Tommy stitch so when I look at this now I can see that I have a blending or a variegation that is going on to this point meeting right up to here and that is when I'm going to digitize my next line which is going to do the rest of the solid fill color so let's turn off our true view I want to make sure that I'm staying pretty much exactly on these lines so I'm going to go right over to here and then let's go right to this point right here and straight actually let's grab that one a little bit shorter here so that one's straight make sure we indent that one a little bit bring this one right over to here and keep this one straight on the push this is going to allow for the pull and I need to make sure that this line here was actually a straight line not a curve come right to this point and hit that one and then we need to hit that angle and we're going to change that one to 30 degrees as well so when I look at this and that is actually going to be a density spacing of 0.4 millimeters so I'm going to have 0.4 there I'm going to make sure that this one is also 0.4 so that's going to be 0.4 millimeters which it already is so that one's good right there that one's good right there actually it still says point there, let's change that one and let's look at this now and see how it looks so now I can see I have my variegation and it is going from solid to a variegated back to a solid again and I know that's going to look nice and clean when it actually sews out and the best part is when we look at the player it's actually going to when we get to this point sew in put these areas down then do the next piece right there, do that piece right there, and it ends up finishing right onto the top. We'll make sure that our end point is right at the top of that, so we are now done. Now that my fills are done, I can go in and get rid of all of those lines that I was using as guidelines for my fill direction, so let's just delete those. I don't need those anymore, but what I really do need is to be able to see that outer border that I wanted to create. So I'm going to grab those three fills that I just did, and I'm going to uh, take those and let's hide them right now. So I'm going to hide the selected objects. And what I want to do now is I want to digitize this area. I know it's uh, going to start and stop wherever I want within the design, but I do want to look at how this is going to flow as far as stitches are concerned. So if I look at this, I have a choice right here on this sharp angle how I want it to approach, 
And for me, logically, the thing that makes the most sense is to go around this direction clockwise so that when it finishes, it'll do this first and finish that second and it'll look the cleanest. So what I'm going to do is go back to my 6 to 1 scale. I'm going to turn off my true view so I'm just seeing my line there around the outside. And I'm going to go into digitize and let's digitize block objects. I want to make sure that I am in a satin stitch. And this is going to be pretty much any color because it's going to be the color of the actual fabric when, you know, or the cap fabric so that we don't see it. So I'm going to draw an imaginary line all the way down to there, which brings me right to this point here. And I'm going to do a straight, 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 and then curve, 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 straight. And then here I could probably do a straight. And then here I'm going to ease into my corners. So I'm going to, you know, kind of make sure that I put all of my digitizing theory into practice. Again, if you take the Digitizer's Dream course, I teach how to ease into corners properly for the best results. And we also give you a lot of a foundation as far as mapping is concerned. You know, this type of design here, it's really not all that complex, but I want to make sure that it is mapped properly. You want it to actually sew on a curved surface a finished hat and give you the best possible results and know that your borders are all nice and clean and the same width. Trying to do this freehand without have drawing those basic lines or those base lines uh, as my artwork, this would have been a very, very difficult and time consuming task to do otherwise. So I'm going to go from straight to straight and then ease into my corner and curve and then go back to a straight and then go here to straight again curving into this and curving around so using that running stitch as a outline or guideline is really what I wanted to achieve and it did the job very very well I have you know something that is two millimeters offset all the way around I'm not guessing if it's going to be perfect I know it's going to be pretty much dead on I'm drawing that imaginary line from here to here and then I just have to go right to here to that point and hit enter. And if I look at how that sews, it's exactly the way I wanted it. So now, if I want to bring all of my colors back really quickly, I can unhide all, so we'll unhide everything. And I can see now that I have a nice variegation that is being kind of tidied up on all the edges by that satin stitch around the outside. And keeping in mind that that finishing satin stitch is in reality going to be the same color as the background. So if I wanted it white, it would be white. If I'm on a black shirt, it's going to be black, but it will give me nice clean lines. So I'll just grab that outline again. Let's turn it back to a yellow color just so that I can see it a little bit clearer. I can actually hit rid get rid of the artwork by hitting the D button and let's just zoom in a tiny little bit so that I can see what this looks like and I can see that it's a center run. Now with this even though my settings are at pure cotton and you can change your settings at any time and it will globally change them this is where I do go in and I like to set my own value sometimes because to make sure this is clean on the inside and the outside I want to make sure that I have an edge run underlay. The edge run is going to actually make a, a more defined look and while I'm there now I can get rid of both of those uh, art stitches that I created and I know that I have a design that is going to for the most part look good let's bring the artwork back and all I have to do is finish the white part of the design now and I'm going to hide those other sections again so let's hide the selected areas so that I can see that white design in there now now I'm going to digitize the white area so that it's path logically and will have the least amount of movement so that means that this largest area first is the one that I'm going to want to do as a satin stitch so I'm going to go to digitize blocks I'm going to go to satin stitch and I'm going to do a different color just so I can see it knowing that I want to have this uh, branch straight across here I want to make sure that I put a point right here and let's just go right like this and go point 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 curve and then I need to start in my curves and just make sure that I get a nice curve all the way in there halfway through until I get right to this point here and that's going to give me a nice area now I'm going to turn off the auto split for a second because I want to see just how much this is going to split on the uh, offset here actually you know let's turn that back on for a second just so I can see what happens 
because I would prefer for there not to be any split on this. This normally the auto split is perfect when you are talking about embroidering on a finished garment, and you do not want the uh, you know the the fabric to show through, so to speak, on a split stitch. If it gets too long, you want it to make sure anything over seven millimeters gives you that split. So I want to look here and see how it's going to look, and there I can see that it splits in multiple areas. But if I turn it off, I don't see it actually staggering out yet, so I think it would still be fine. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to continue on in this, and let's do this point here, and let's just grab this one. I'm going to make sure that that split is off on pretty much everything, and let's go. So I'll make sure I digitize the white area. I'm going to make it a different color. I'll just go for orange. I'm going to do digitized blocks. I'm going to do it with a satin stitch. And if I do this largest piece first, knowing that it's going to have to be broken apart a little bit, uh, I'll do that as I kind of go along and make sure it looks nice and clean. So that is going to be a straight, straight. And then here is going to be a curve. And then we'll do a curve. And here we'll do another curve and a curve. And there's a straight and a curve and here's a curve and a curve and here's going to be a straight and a straight and hit the enter and I can see the auto split is off so when I look at it it's not splitting that object if I have the auto split on you can see there it actually started to splice it together because it went over seven millimeters but because this isn't on a finished garment it's going on a structured hat and it's going on a fill I'm going to see if I can get away with doing a very long satin stitch because it's going to look cleaner than having a splice stitch. So the, the real, I guess, uh, telltale will be the next object that I do. But before I get to that, I am going to go back to my digitizing tools, digitize an open shape and do a run stitch. And I'm going to run right from here. And I'm gonna finish this area off right here. So I've traveled into that little object. Make sure I have my digitized blocks with my satin back on, and let's just do this little piece, trying to keep this straight line consistent with the orange one that I've done, so that's straight, straight, then curve, curve, and we're going to do a curve, and a curve right to this point here, and hit enter. And then I can come up and do this whole piece. I know it's going to connect, so I'm just going to start right here, and we'll cut short that little end, make sure that we are going straight to straight, and I'm trying to make sure that I keep this in line with the areas that I've already digitized. So here and right over to here. Let's hit that enter. And then I'm going to pick up right where I left off and go right here to here to here and to here. And let's see how that looks. And then I'll start right here to here. And I'll continue along this path using straights and curves. And I'm being pretty precise with this, making sure that I'm keeping all of these lines nice and consistent with each other. This one's coming back to a straight, hit enter, and then I can start right here and continue around this little point here. And make sure that I stay right on my artwork. This is where being at six to one is a huge benefit. So let's go right here to here, here to here. That's going to be a straight, then back to curves. And then this is going to come right back to this area right here and enter. So now if I look at that, I can see, and let's just zoom in real quick here and look at this area. I want to make sure that this is as clean as possible. Let's turn off our true view. I can see there is pull compensation on there. Let's hit this one over and make sure this one is leading up to it like that. That will split ever so slightly and I am pretty happy with how that's all turned out. I have an edge run with a zigzag on there so we should be good. And let's then go to the next object which I'm probably going to go all the way across and do this next largest piece but I can start it right here. So there will be a trim in the design. It's going to trim from one area over to the next and then continue on. What I can do is go back to my 6 to 1 scale and let's hit F6 and let's just pan over and we will do our next little piece and I need to make sure that I try to keep that as abrupt as possible. Uh, so let's uh, come in here, go back to digitize satin and let's make sure that I have a point here, here and that almost looks like a straight curve 
let's just go there and now let's bring this around and I'm going to try to make sure I keep all of these lined up as straight as possible something like that and there's a nice point there and now I can come from here all the way down making sure I keep my angles consistent do this as one piece, enter it, and then do the next piece. I know the software is automatically putting in pull compensation, which it sh definitely should be doing. That was a straight, there's going to be a curve. I'm going to curve all the way around here, just like this, back to a straight, to a curve, and then two small straights, enter and then I can probably do this little piece and leave this one to last so I'm going to come in here cut this short ever so slightly then come back this way let's do this piece next cut that one short Do this one right over to here, and then this one we are going to cut this one short as well, right to there, and then we'll just continue on. Let's turn off the true view for a second and bring this one right to there, like that. following the artwork as closely as possible but knowing that I need to definitely cut short that end there just like that and then I just need to do this little piece here so I'm just going to come right here that can be a single piece across and let's make sure that I look at this now hit this object here I'm going to hit the H key I'm going to make sure that it ends a little bit on the inside like that make sure that everything is going to have enough of a trim point on it and I think that actually looks pretty good so let's just go here that's where my start and stop is let's start over here and my stops over there which is fine I just want to make sure that I can control the trims in the design and now if I look at this that is pretty much exactly the way I want it these lines right here, I can see it staggered a little bit. If I get rid of my artwork, I can see that I have a stitch length that's going past the 12.1 uh, millimeters. So that will register a trim. I don't want to have that there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my zoom so you can see a little bit clearer how it's actually staggering those lines. I'm going to grab that object and I'm going to put an auto split on and I'm not going to have a choice. I'll need to have an auto split for that one object. It will look clean. I won't have any issues, but at least it won't leave any negative space. So there's our design. We're going to very quickly bring the artwork back in and I'm going to bring all of the colors back up. So let's select all and let's unhide all so we can see how that variegation looks. And if I bring it up to the one to one scale, that is the logo that's going to go on the hat. Now I'm going to do a quick redraw and just take a look at this because there is some further modifications that I'm going to make because this is on a finished hat. The uh, fabric assist, which uh, I guess accommodates the density of a fabric, doesn't necessarily take into account the theory of digitizing for a hat. So looking at this, I do see some things that I want to change right away within the underlay of these objects and uh, I'm going to make sure that I go in and adjust a few little things as I move forward. So uh, let's just go one by one through these objects and I'll show you what I'm going to do. Uh, number one, I'm going to grab that object right there and I'm going to zoom in a little bit and I am going to make sure that I take off my edge run underlay. I just need to have actually a uh, tatami underlay and I stitch spacing three millimeters should be fine 
Uh, then I'm going to come in and hit that H key so that I can adjust some of the nodes and I'm going to make sure that I adjust some of these nodes just a little bit especially because it's starting from the bottom up I know that it is probably going to gap a little bit on the bottom here so I'm going to move that side up a little bit I'm also going to do the same thing right here let's just move this one up a little bit over here just so that we don't see any of that stitching poking out of the bottom afterwards and then I will go over to the other side and make sure that I do the same thing. So I'm just going to move this one up a little bit right here and make sure that is out of the way as well. So that is my underlay for that one. The next one I'm going to leave that pretty much as is because it already has that uh, variegation in it. But I will change this one as well. This is the top one. I'm going to do the same thing, get rid of the underlay on that one. Just bring it up as a tatami and stitch spacing at three millimeters is fine. And I think for the most part that should be okay. I'm going to call up this border around the outside. And looking at this, I am going to add a little bit more pull compensation onto this. So I'm going to, let's say instead of 0.2, I'm going to do 0.3 millimeters pull comp, add a little bit more pull comp. And I'm also going to take the uh, normal edge run underlay. I'm going to inset it a little bit just so it doesn't fall out the outside of it. And I think that should pretty much be fine. And then if I look at all of these objects here, I'm just going to grab all of the white ones really quickly. And let's take this one here and all the way down. Because this is going on top of a fill, I know it has a really good base. And I really should not need to have uh, that zigzag in any of those objects. So I'm just going to go and make sure that all the zigzags are out of there. So let's just turn off that underlay, make sure there's no zigzags. I'll just put it on an edge run and let's just turn the edge run on and that will get rid of some of those stitches there as well. And then I think that should just about do it. Uh, if there's anything else that I see, should be good. So let's run that on the machine, see how this turns out, see if there's any uh, registration problems, but I think I might have it worked out for the most part. One thing I could do, and I've, less, I've left the uh, best till last, is I'm gonna take this uh, color right here, and I am putting a mark right through the design, so let's uh, actually grab all these colors here, and let's hide them. So I'm just going to take this one, and let's do a hide selected, and I'm going to start right down here at the bottom. You can see that line going through right on the zero mark. That is the center seam of the hat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on a digitized run. Just do it at about a you know, 3.5 millimeter stitch, a little bit longer. And I'm just going to start here and go right down like this. And I'm going to go here. And this is going to, from the center out, I did a line down the center seam. And then from the center out from that seam, I came here and I'm just gonna go a little bit further like this. And then one more up to the top and going all the way out to the outside now. And this will grab all of these objects and bring them back to the center. So if I look at that now, there is some underlay it's kind of a underlay that's going to hold down that hat. I will run this in the exact same color as the hat. So that uh, outline that I'm going to try to match up to the color of the hat, that'll be my first color as well. And then all I have to do is grab all of that and I'm going to unhide all. So let's just actually grab everything. We're going to unhide all and then I'll move right to that very end and I'll bring this one up to the beginning in the color order. So it's going to go right there. So that should pretty much be good. Let's uh, save this design, run it on the machine, and we'll show you the finished results. Okay, well the design is done and I have it here on the cap. I actually made sure that I chose 
two very close greens when I ran it, a slightly darker, a slightly lighter. So it is a very, very subtle change in variegation. If I used a you know very light thread and a dark thread, then you'd obviously visually see those lines in that change. So that's really where you know colors do matter as well. You want to make sure that you have every thread color in whatever brand you use because those subtle differences can make a big difference. Now the other thing I did want to mention, if you look at the position on this hat, I did this on a 10 needle brother machine and uh, this is just a personal preference because we have many machines that we run uh, but the cap attachment on the brother machines, the 10 needles, don't allow you to go very close to the uh, peak and the crown of the hat. Uh, generally on a commercial machine it allows you to get closer to the peak when it's actually inset and I can get a little bit closer so uh, you know I have no control over the positioning of the actual height of the design that is automatically set within that machine your machine may vary with regards to the actual height of the design you can do and how close you can get to the actual crown on the peak and the one thing that I did make sure I did was I dropped down my needle and I made sure that my needle was positioned right to that center seam of the hat. So I made sure that it started. And uh, for the most part, I'm happy with this. The registration is good. It looks nice and clean. No real issues for it. I will let you know that digitizing four caps is one of those things that does take time. Uh, I know I make it look easy and keep in mind that we you know, had 18 head machines that ran caps in production three shifts a day, six days a week. And when I had to learn how to digitize for hats, it was like starting over and learning a completely new thing. So it is one of those things where there is no automatic uh, setting for you know, having a design switch to cap mode and use the proper underlays and densities and pushes and pulls and all those little tweaks that you need because you're now on a curved surface. It just comes down to patience and learning and doing things over and over again. If you want a really good foundation of digitizing and a place to start, that's where our Digitizer's Dream Course comes in. We actually teach on 11 popular brands and they are interactive so that you're seeing and doing and that is the key. You only get good at something by applying yourself and putting in the time to get better. So hope you enjoyed this one. We'll see you next time.